All you have to do is receive tonight. That's all you have to do. I want you to really receive, be in the moment. We said, Minister Tam said earlier, you know, unplug from your phones. We are so connected to phones, right? You can be so connected to a phone that you don't even see the person next to you. And so tonight I want you to be with the person next to you. Um, we don't know what everybody came in here with, but I believe that you're strategically placed next to someone. You're strategically placed next to that woman for a reason. She might need you to pass her a tissue tonight. She may need you to hold her hand or caress her tonight. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. So let's pray. Will you pray with me? Father, we just bless your name, oh God. God, you are so absolutely good. God, I thank you, Lord God, for this moment, Lord God, that we get to become more like you, God. God, before we got here, we may not have been the best representation of you, oh God. So forgive us of our sins. So forgive us, Lord God, of our shortcomings, Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for every single woman here that's under the sound of my voice, oh God. I know, Lord God, that they were purposed to be here on tonight. They may feel like they were just invited by a friend or that they just saw the Facebook flyer, Lord God, but you had purpose for them to be present on tonight because there's purpose in each and every woman that's here. There's purpose, Lord God, that you placed on the inside of us while we were yet in our mother's wombs, Lord God. Help us to fulfill it, Lord Jesus. Help us to fulfill that thing that you birthed us into this earth to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 All right. Before you take your seats, let's turn to Colossians 3. Thank you. Colossians 3, we're going to read. Starting at verse 1. You there with me? All right. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. You have, have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater. Worshiping the things of this world. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. But now is the time. Somebody say, now is the time. Now is the time. To, get to get rid of anger. Malicious behavior. Malicious behavior. <laughs> Slander and dirty language. And dirty. Amen. Amen. Don't lie to each other. For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Take, you can take your seats. Before you do, hug the lady next to you. Amen? Amen. Before I get started into the word, I do want to thank the team of ladies, the lab girls, those girls, <laughs> the girls, the lab girls. Hey, if you're part of the lab, you could just stand up. We just want to celebrate you for all the work that you put into tonight. <laughs> These girls have worked uh, diligently behind the scenes, uh, making sure that tonight is uh, fulfilled in excellence and that God would receive glory from this moment. And so I thank them for the labor of their hands and for their prayers and for the time that they've spent staying up here with me and we not realizing it's 11 o'clock at night and that we have to go to work the next day. 
and they stay without complaints. So I'm grateful for them. And my husband is here, our lead pastor in the back. <laughs> I absolutely thank God for him. Uh, hey, next, next month we celebrate 22 years together. <laughs> That's amazing. And 22 years. I'm so grateful to the Lord for him. Amen. Hey, and our, is Casey still here? Can we thank God for Casey? Yeah. Casey, thank you. <laughs> Amen. So I'll, I'll take a topic tonight. My topic is become like him. And I think at this season of our lives and, and this season in the world, there's so much influence, right? There's influence on TV. There's influence on social media. I mean, you, there's so many things. I'm, the, even the ads are influential, right? You can be on social media and all of a sudden an ad comes up for losing weight. You weren't even thinking about losing weight. And then the ad comes up and you're like, do I need to lose weight? Why is this in my Facebook feed, right? There's all kinds of things that influence us. And so it's important that we, we focus on becoming like him. And so tonight I just have five points to share with you. I have five points to share with you on how you can become more like him, amen? More like Christ. So the first one is you gotta change your mind. Number one, change your mind when i was studying for this I, I came across a note that i had from bishop tudor bismarck we had the privilege to see him at another one of our uh, local churches in the city once and he said the reason you can't change your mind is because you need your mind to change it and i thought wait a minute what <laughs> right that's one of those things where you say I want to change my mind, but the reality is you have to use your mind to change your mind, right? You can't just change it. You literally have to use your mind to change it. So Philippians 4 and 13 says, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. That's Philippians, man. Think about what you start your day off with. When you first wake up, what are your first thoughts? Right? If you pay real close attention, whatever your first thoughts are, they literally, they, they give you destination for the day. Your entire day. If you wake up and you have a good thought, you have a good day. You wake up, you have a bad thought, you have a bad day. Right? Every red light stops you. Everybody is slow before you. And this is the way you feel. It's not really intentional. It's not really happening. You just feel like this because you're having a bad day. You, you, because your thought purposed a bad day for you. Right? If when you wake up in the morning, if you focus on what the scripture says and it says, fix your thoughts on what is true. The thought that you're thinking, is it true? If it's not, cast it down. It's really that simple, right? Is it honorable? If it's not, cast it down. Is it right? Is what you're thinking right? Is what you're thinking right to post? <laughs> right? Is it right? Think about it. You type the whole thing up with fire fingers. <laughs> right? Is it right though? Will God be glorified in what you're about to post? Is it pure? Are your thoughts pure? Do you walk around thinking the worst? Think about what you think about, right? You have to change your mind. In order to become more like him, you have to change your mind. And you are in control of that. No one can do that for you. No one can change your mind. You have to do it yourself. You have to say within yourself, I shouldn't be thinking this, right? If we all walked around with little bubbles, y'all see, y'all know those little bubbles, right? Imagine what people would think. They would be like, you thinking, what, what are you thinking, right? But so you know what you're thinking. The only person that knows what you're thinking is you, right? You and God. And what he's saying to you here is he's saying, 
Okay, think on these things. You're going to be challenged to think about other things. Your mind is going to stray. You have to pull yourself back and say, no, in order for me to be like him, I have to change my mind. I have to renew my mind. I have to be renewed in the way that I think. Amen? So we have to stop occupying our mind with things that are, aren't, aren't true. Be mindful of what you watch. So I'm going to say real housewives of whatever city you want, whichever one, any, any one of them, right? They depict relationships that don't trust. Everybody's always scheming. Everybody, right? There literally are no genuine relationships on that show. I, I haven't seen one. No genuine relationships, Right? What happens is you watch that stuff and then your genuine relationships, you think they're not good. Right? You think everybody's like the real housewives of whatever city. Right? Literally, you've put yourself in that show. <laughs> you even identify with some of the characters. I'm just like such and such. No, you're not. <laughs> you are not like her. <laughs> We had a powerful series by Pastor Dante um, sometime back. It was called An Introduction to Belief. Y'all remember that? Boy, that one stuck with me. He said, belief will change your actions. Who, who, who believes that you need to brush your teeth every day? Raise your hand. If I brought a dentist in here right now, and he got on the stage and he said, it's newfound uh, research. You don't need to brush your teeth every day. Y'all would be like, listen. I don't know where you got that from, but since I've been able to, to talk or able to hold a toothbrush, I've been brushing my teeth. I'm, I believe that you're supposed to brush your teeth, okay? Right? We would not believe it. It's small choices like that, right? When you were little, your parents taught you how to brush your teeth. When my boys were little, Pastor Dante and I, we made this cute little song for them on how to brush their teeth. I'm not going to sing it to you tonight because you're not three and five and it won't be appropriate for me to do so. But at some point we sung them that song and every time they brushed their teeth, we were helping them to understand this is how you're supposed to brush your teeth, right? It, it was small choices, small things, right? You wake them up in the morning. You say, hey, brush your teeth. You wake them up in the morning. Hey, make your bed. This is what created the pattern of lifestyle, right? This is what created that pattern. This is what you do today, right? You don't even think about it. You wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth. This is how it should be with, with how we focus on our minds, right? It should be natural for you to say, hey, this is not an appropriate thought. You should be able to catch it right then. Catch it. Hey, this is not okay. I shouldn't be thinking this thing. I got to fix my thinking. I got to change the TV. I got to change the radio station. I got to put my phone down, right? Because it's impacting my mind. And in order for me to be like him, I, I got to watch this thing. My mind is super important. It's powerful. Your mind is powerful. It literally will change your actions. Amen. Number two, somebody say number two. Number two is forgive yourself. You've asked Christ for forgiveness. Now it's time for you to forgive yourself. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. What happens here is you play the thing over and over in your mind. Over and over again. It happened 20 years ago, but you still have thoughts about it. Because you haven't forgiven yourself. You, have, you, you begin to have an identity with the past thing, right? Instead of having an identity in Christ, you have an identity in your past about who it was that you were. That's just who I am. That's what people said. People always say, I am this, right? That's not what God says. That's not what God says. It says in Romans 8... Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Who in here needs some life and peace? Amen. 
forgive yourself and then forgive anyone else that's offended you. It says, remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. If you don't forgive others, then you are not, you are not able to be forgiven. I think it's, forgiveness is one of those things where we say, God, forgive me for X, Y, Z, right? And then somebody does X to you and you're like, no, I'm not forgiving you. But you just ask God for X, Y, and Z. Why can't you forgive X? You should be able to. You want God to forgive you for your whole list. <laughs> and for some of us, the list is lengthy. And that's okay. But the, what you have to do is forgive yourself and forgive others. In order to be more like him, God is a forgiving God. When you come to him and you say, God, forgive me for this or that, he won't say, well, November 16th, 1985, you asked me to forgive you of this exact same thing. That's not what happens. <laughs> That's not what happens. <laughs> so number one was what? And number two? Amen. Number three, be bold in faith. It's going to take some boldness and faith to move forward from the old you. It really is. From old habits, old relationships, old mindsets. It takes boldness to set down the old you and walk into the new you that's in Christ. Amen? Amen. The scripture tells about a woman named Rahab. I was studying her. And just high level, she heard about Joshua's success with God. And what happened is she stepped out in bold faith to house two spies. Right? So her stepping out in faith, trusting God... She made a decision to live differently than all her own people. <laughs> it changed her life. And then when she was in the process of what I would say negotiation, she said, okay, I need you to do this for me. And then I need you to do it for my mama, my daddy, my auntie, my uncle, my cousins. She said, all of these people, I need you to do it for them as well. It says, if, if you don't know her name, she is mentioned in scripture as Rahab the harlot, the prostitute. What I want you to know about her is that she is Rahab, the mother of Boaz, right? Now, every lady in here knows who Boaz is. Everybody, right? I'm waiting on my Boaz, right? At some point, her bold faith is what, how Boaz was produced, right? Imagine that generations down the line are recorded because of her bold decision in faith, right? So you're going to have to make a bold decision in faith because your family is depending on you generations to come they are depending on you to live boldly in faith that is what they need from you they're watching you they literally are watching you your daughters they're watching you people in your workplace they're watching you there are people that are watching you they need to see well what is this thing all about that's what she did she was like wait a minute there, i've seen what god did for joshua Somebody's watching what God is doing in your life. And you have to have bold faith to say, no, I'm going to continue every single day to be bold in my faith and make sure that I'm focused on becoming more like Christ. I don't have time to become like the world. I, I, am, I do not care what I'm not hip on. I really don't. You, there, there's all these different things. When somebody says, I'd be like, what is that? Somebody tell me what that is. There's posts. There's posts sometimes, and I'm like, I have no idea what this is. What is that? It's okay. I'm not embarrassed by that. I'm focused on becoming more like him. I'm not focused on becoming like the world. Number four, pray. Pray. You're going to have to create an actual time to talk to God. The effectual, fervent. Prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual means effective. Fervent, with passion, with intensity. So my boys, when they were little, if we told them, you know, we'll have cookies at 2 o'clock, right? It's 9 o'clock in the morning. No, you can't have cookies. But at 2 o'clock, we can have cookies. At 9.03, my boys would come back and say, Mom, can we have cookies now? No, it's 9.03. It's just 9.03. No, we'll have cookies at 2 o'clock. At 9.06, mom, is it 2 o'clock yet? Can we have cookies now? No, no. 
You know what I'm talking about, right? This is how we should be in prayer. We should continue to keep petitioning the Lord. God saved my family. God changed me. God do this. God help me to be more like you. We shouldn't quit. Little kids don't quit. At 19, you'll give them the cookies. You just say, you know what? Listen, they won't, they are persistent. Just get the cookies. God would do the same thing for you if you continue to be fervent in prayer. Continue asking him. Sometimes he wants to know how bad do you want it? You only ask me one time. Do you really want this thing or not? Do you really want to be healed? Do you really want to be made whole? Amen? We got to be just like children. Children are persistent. They are super persistent. One of the babies here, I said, if you do good in church, if you do good in the youth ministry, come back. XO has a ring pop for you. He came right back to me. I had to explain to him, it's not time yet. It's not, you haven't even been to the youth church yet. It's not time. It's, it's that thing. It's knowing that God has a promise for you. If you believe that he has a promise for you, then keep asking for it. Keep asking for it until you receive it. There are prayers that I have prayed for years. God is not about our time. He's not looking at my time and my year. He's answering prayers that I prayed for years now. But I kept asking. They were worth it. Those prayers were worth me continuing to pray over and over and over again. It seems super redundant. Like, well, why do I keep praying this prayer? It says, effectual and fervent. Keep asking. Keep asking, amen? Be like little children. If he, he says he's going to do it for you, he's going to do it for you, amen? amen? Number one was what? Number two. Number three. Number four. Pray. Number five. Believe that you are new. Amen. Isaiah 43 and 19 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. PD, I love the way he preaches his scripture. He says, Even the good things you shouldn't remember. Don't remember those things, good and bad. Why? Because what happens is you'll focus on even the good things and you'll think that God's going to do it the exact same way he did it the last time. Right? You're new. He's doing a new thing. You don't know how he's going to do it. It's your responsibility to just keep walking in faith and believing that he is going to do it. Right? You are new, but you have to believe that you're new. If you don't believe that you're new, you won't be new. It's really that simple. Of course you're going to walk into old people that know the old you. Of course you are. They should be able to see that you're new. But if you don't believe that you're new, what will happen, this is what will happen, is you'll think, I have to be that same old person because I'm around such and such. I have to be this person because I'm around such and such. No, the Bible says, right now I'm doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing right now, in this moment, doing a new thing in you, but you have to believe that. No, everything doesn't stop immediately, right? You say, well, Pastor Tab, uh, everything didn't stop. I'm trying not to remember the old stuff. I'm, I'm trying to believe that God is doing a new thing in me. But you are here right now. Amen. You're here right now. Listen, give yourselves a hand for being here right now. Like we said earlier, you could have been anywhere. Give, think about five years ago, six years ago. Listen, if we could be truthful, some of us maybe last week. That's okay. We're, I'm not here to condemn you. What I'm here to do is encourage you that tonight was a different decision for you. You said, hey, no, tonight I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to be here at the becoming because I want to become new, God. Literally, I want to become new. Make me more like you. That's what you're here tonight to do It's just get your focus back. That's all you have to do. Get your focus back. If you were focused on something else before you got here, I hope you wrote these points down. And I hope that as you progress throughout your day, throughout your weekend, throughout your week, that you look at these five things and you say, I'm focusing on becoming more like him. Eliminate all the other distractions. Eliminate things that are taking you away from becoming more like him. Focus on becoming more like him. 
So now go, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become more like him. Amen? Come on, celebrate God. Come on, come on, celebrate. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm going to pray, and then you have some cards in your seat. We're going to do a little something together, but I'm going to pray. And if you would, just connect with the woman next to you. Connect with her. Let's pray together. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for the word on tonight, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you purposed it for this moment, Lord God, for each and every woman that's here under the sound of my voice, Lord Jesus. I ask, Father God, that you help us to focus on becoming more like you, God. It's time for us to rise up and take our rightful place in the kingdom, Lord Jesus. It's time for us to stand bold in faith, Lord God, so that we can show our families what it looks like to be like you, Lord God. To be focused on being like you, Lord Jesus. Not like the world, Lord God, but like you, Lord Jesus. Father God, the women that are standing here, Lord God, help us to be supportive of each other, Lord God. Help us to encourage each other and exhort each other when we see that we're struggling, Lord God. Help us to encourage each other and point us back to you, Lord Jesus. Father God, bless each and every woman here under the sound of my voice, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are on purpose and we are focused on becoming more like you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So you have three little connection cards in your seat. Turn around and grab all three of them. What I want you to do is write your phone number, your name, and your phone number on them. There are some pins up here. Thank you, Carrie. I want you to write your name and your phone number on them. And then we are going to connect. You're going to connect with three women here. Not three women that you know. Three women that you don't know. Everybody has on a badge so you can see their name. I want you to walk over to three women and give them that connection card. Now, when you receive that card, I want you to commit to encouraging that lady, encouraging that woman of God to become more like him. Amen. However you want to do that. You want to send her a text. You want to call her. You want to pray over her. Whatever it is that you feel that you are able to do, whatever you do, if you're an exhorter, encourager, whatever it is that you're gifted to do, share that with the lady that you hand that card over to. Amen? Amen. We're going to take a few minutes to do so. You can move around. Don't be shy. Once you get your name written. Name and phone number. No one sell these numbers to telemarketers, okay? We're trusting you to do right with our phone numbers. <laughs>